Hello, welcome to you, my channel. Thank you for always trusting me and always uh, visiting my channel. It's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, I am trying as much as I can to improve on our communication or the presentation based on feedback. So today you might be seeing kind of a different um, set setup for these um presentation so thank you for always giving me your feedback i appreciate that uh, please as we continue to grow and as we continue to uh, improve i appreciate you getting back to me in terms of what we could do more or what we could do less with that said thank you all right as a way of introduction if this is the first time i'm going to introduce myself i am john bosco uh short for jb my friends do call me so feel free to call me jv if that is okay with you um today we're going to take a look at how scrum could be used in planning weddings um i've said that before in one of my videos that scrum is not just used for software development right so you could use scrum for a number of things um it could be used for different types of projects services so wedding is one of those projects that you can use Scrum and Agile to execute. So perhaps today I will show you the step-by-step -step approach on how you can, in fact, borrow some practices of Scrum and Agile in order to have a smooth and a lovely wedding. With that said, let's get into the content of today. All right, so as you can see on the screen, I'm uh, going to use Scrum to plan and execute your wedding. Um, it's just to shed insight on how you could have a hassle-free wedding. Um, because I know in planning wedding, there are a lot of things to put into consideration. Your, your venue, your invitees, your, uh, who you might call, um, your menu, and all the kind of things. So today... All you have to do is just to sit tight. I am going to make it quite so easier and very straightforward for you. Okay. Um, I didn't realize that in planning um, a wedding, there are a couple of things that needs to be put into consideration. So here, I kind of call it components, wedding components, right? Um, to give us a sense of what we are doing, um, before we can get into that, uh, we need to understand what is the primary purpose of Scrum. I mean, a lot of people have different idea of what Scrum or the aim of Scrum is, but for the for the content of this presentation or this uh, explanation here, um, is kind of used as a project enabler. It's used to make things easier. In software development, Scrum as an agile framework is used to uh, as a framework or as a process that makes the execution of projects quite so simple and easy. So in other words, for wedding, you could also say that it is also uh, a project enabler. Right, so we understand that just like in Scrum, as in software development, there are three Scrum accountabilities, which is the Scrum master, the product owner, and the development team. However, in planning an event like wedding, we don't have the developers. We don't. We are not writing any kind of code, right? So, the two major roles that you could use in planning your wedding is the Scrum, uh, wedding Scrum master, and the wedding product owner, who is also called the PO. So, for the content of today, we'll talk about the Scrum master and the product owner. How can these two roles be used? measurably in planning your wedding. At each point in time, please go ahead and put your comments in the comment section and I will try as much as I can to respond to those comments as soon as I can. And as you can see on the screen, um, you have the email address. If at some point in time you think you wanted to contact me for a Scrum or need more explanation or you want to have a free consultation, please email me or you think you want us to connect on Instagram, please try to connect with me on Instagram. Most importantly, please, if you haven't done so, click the subscribe button on this YouTube channel so that at any point in time I release 
video contents, you can always get the notification and you'll be the first. I mean, you'll be the first to watch my videos. All right. So what are the Scrum roles or wedding roles and how can they be useful in planning your wedding? The Scrum Master is mostly the one that oversees the smooth running of events, right? He makes sure how he kind of make sure that the objective of that wedding is well communicated to each member participating in that event. Be it the PO, be it uh, who are the invitees, be it uh, the event planners, be it whoever has been invited to be an active participant uh, in that ceremony, the Scrum Master makes sure that everything is well uh, the information is passed across. Just like in software development, the Scrum Master helps the development team to make sure that they understand the product objective. Again, the Scrum Master in this scenario helps to remove all kinds of obstacles. In Scrum, as in software development, we call it blockers or impediments. What are kinds? There are a couple of you know blockers or you know obstacles you might we might have in in wedding scenario in wedding situation. Sometimes you might have the uh, the caterer not responding to emails or phone calls or the DJ delaying or any kind of whatever that could slow down the progress of that event. It is the prerogative of the Scrum Master to be able to follow up and make sure that those you know uh, situations do not inhibit the progress of that wedding. So you need to have a Scrum Master who understands the in and out of events, especially in terms of wedding. What about the PO? What does the PO do? The PO is the one that oversees the PBIs. What is PBI? Product backlog items. You might be wondering, how do we have product backlog item in a wedding scenario? Obviously we have. Have you considered about your invitation card? Have you considered about flowers? Have you considered about your menu? Have you considered about, you know, the people attendees? These are part of the things that makes up the PBIs, product backlog items for a wedding scenario. Um, so the PO who owns the backlog oversees that the wedding backlog is well ironed out and identified. Again, the PO helps to prioritize. By prioritization, I mean by ranking those items in the backlog. Um, it doesn't mean that the backlog is like a container. It could mean like a bucket of list of things to be executed, like requirements. So the BO ranks them according to the, you know, the order of value, right? In software development, we have requirements that are key into the product backlog, and the PO is the one that manages that, right? And the PO is the one that also oversees the budgets. In Scrum, as in software development, you know, PO might play a key role in budgeting, but the project manager is the one that manages the budget. So in this situation, the PO takes that lead. Now, in software development, we have who people who are also called the stakeholders. But in a wedding scenario, we do have wedding stakeholders. Who are they? We have the parents of both parties who can be identified as the stakeholders, the decision makers here, the people who could approve and sign the checks. Just like in software development, in some of the development environments, the stakeholders are the decision makers, they sign and approve. In fact, they are the project sponsor. So you need to identify these key roles in order to make sure that you have a good wedding uh, planned and executed. With that said, the next thing you have to identify is the wedding scrum backlog. So in planning wedding, there are a couple of things that you might put into consideration, like the requirements. Talk about the wedding venue. You have to choose a venue that will be conducive, right? Are you planning your wedding? Are you hoping that your wedding could happen in a city or in kind of a small town or in a very big hall or in a very tiny hall? What venue are you looking at, right? So the PO, like I said earlier, helps you to iron those things out. You have the wedding event time. You can kind of consider a lot of things, okay, are you going to, you know, have that in terms of uh, summertime or wintertime or fall? I mean, what part season of the year are you thinking of having that event? So you think of time, are you thinking of having the, 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 the wedding in the mornings, in the afternoon or in the evening or at night? 
what time these are kind of things you have to put into consideration considering the caliber of people you're hoping to um you're hoping to have for your wedding then you talk about the wedding dress right not just for the the couple but also for you know for the attendees for people who might be participating as your ashebis you talk about the menu right the type of food you want to serve your audience right you talk about the wedding invitations you talk about the cake you talk about the flower you talk about your guests and then finally you'll be thinking about your honeymoon right so do you want to spend your honeymoon um in a hotel or you want to go for you know go to to africa like safari and visit those places or you want to go to um you know you 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 might be thinking a lot of things so these are a couple of things i mean there are tons and tons of things you can find in the wedding scrum backlog but i'm just kind of helping you to identify some of the things you might likely have in a common or in a very generic you know wedding scenario now how does the PO prioritize or how does the PO rank those items in the backlog in software development there is a technique that the PO could use which is called the Moscow as you can see on the screen you might be wondering what does the Moscow mean there are things that must be identified that the priority or the value is so much that we could not we we, we is, is is a no is a is a something we must do there are things we should do in other words after the most we should do them there are things that we could do them right there are things that we wouldn't do so these are based on the values that they could bring to the wedding right and then you might be wondering why do we have to prioritize those items in the backlog obviously you don't want to get overwhelmed right when you don't organize your items or ideas or requirements or tasks in a very well iron in a very well um you know uh, organized format you might be all over the place so you don't want to obviously don't want to get overwhelmed so by organizing this in such a a ranking format will let you, you know, avoid such a trap. You want to stay organized. And then you want to also make sure that the highest value of those requirements are well attended to before the lesser ones. Okay, with that said, you now think about the cadence of the events, right? In software development, we used to have, that's what is called ceremonies. And ceremonies, in other words, in the little man language, is called meetings. In Scrum, as in software development, those meetings have papers. That is why they are called ceremonies or events. Now, if we have to borrow them, you know, if we have to translate that software environment to wedding, right? Before the actual wedding happens, there are a couple of plannings that should happen behind before that day day, right? That is the first spring cycle. In software development, there are cycle periods or duration. We have one week's two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks maximum. But this is not a software development environment. You want to take things inch by inch, piece by piece. I would always suggest having a one-week sprint or one-week spring cycle. Spring cycle means the duration of the cyclic or the duration of cycle where you have to repeat those events or those planning before the actual D-Day. Now, what about the sprints or weddings sprints events that you might have likely happen? You have the planning, obviously, you're going to plan. You have the daily scrum. Uh, we're going to explain that uh, in, in GFE later on. You have the review and you have the retrospective. You might be wondering, what are those events? What, what and what? Okay. The sprint planning or the wedding planning is the period where your team, whoever that you want to be a part of that meeting, we begin to brainstorm, we begin to identify the goal, right? We begin to channel to make that wedding a success. The daily scrum, as in software development, is a 15 minutes meeting every day where the development team meets to update, inspect and adapt based on the sprint goal. So in this situation, the members of your team would have to meet every 24 hours at an agreed time and at a great place. It could be visually, it could be in a you know, physical environments, and they can use either 15 minutes 
to be able to inspect and adapt based on the goal they want to achieve, right? What they're basically doing is just to, you know, keep each other accountable, say, okay, we agreed to do this. How are we moving towards that objective, right? So, and they could use that opportunity to identify if there is any kind of risk, if there is any kind of impediments, or if there is a kind of dependencies they need to mitigate. Right, and then um, you talk about the sprint. When do you want to start the sprint? I would always suggest to start on a Sunday evening because Sunday is seen as the first week of first day of the week, right? So the evening of the Sunday might be the best time to start and kickstart your sprint. And then, uh, how about the sprint review? The sprint review is where the team, the members of your team, have to review what you guys have committed to to do for that week. And then you can show what was accomplished or what was done, done, and what needs to be carried over to the next week. Then the retrospective period is when the members of your team, again, have to reflect, how did the week go, right? What went well for that week? What didn't go well? And what are they going to do in order to improve the next week coming forth? With that said, and then you'll be uh, thinking of having that wedding on that D-Day. How does that sound? It sounds like something you could do. Okay. That is where you need I need Scrum Master. Right? You need I need Scrum Master to help you plan your wedding. You need I need Scrum Master to help you have a successful wedding. You don't need I need Scrum, you don't need I need Scrum Master just only for software development. Or maybe your team is struggling or you are not sure or what to do in order to become a Scrum Master. I've always pointed this out that Scrum is not just for software development. Scrum is an agile framework that could be used in a number of different ways. Okay, um, that's where we're going to stop for, for today. Um, again, as I've already said at the beginning of this section, please reach out. We want to grow this community. I started this community or channel so that I can help you. And how can you help me by sharing these contents? All you need to do is to like, subscribe, and then share it on your social media platform. Do you have a friend who is thinking of planning a wedding and you think that you might offer some kind of suggestion? Let your friend know, let your colleague know about how to use Scrum to plan and have a successful wedding. All right. Thank you so much for Letting me speak to you today, I am hoping that we will meet next time. In the meantime, bye for now.